For this question, we will go over confidence interval, and I would like to explain this concept by providing an example. So let's say, for argument's sake, that there are a million patients out there that have diabetes. So our sample size is one million number of people that have diabetes out there. And we are interested to find out what's the mean value for the fasting blood sugar for these patients. The problem is that we won't have enough resources to, to be able to check the, the blood sugar for all these one million patients. So what we can do is actually to obtain a small sample size from the original population. So let's say we pick 100 patients and then obtain a new curve out there. So we'll get something like this. So if you've noticed, the curve would no longer be as smooth as the original population because the sample size was much bigger here, but still maintains a bell-shaped curve. And uh, let's say for argument's sake that the mean value for blood sugar is 140 and standard deviation is 20. The question is, based on the sample size, how sure can we be about the mean value here. So there is something called confidence interval and it would provide us with a range and a confidence of how sure we are that the actual mean falls in that uh, specific range. So the equation for confidence interval is sample mean plus and minus the value z for which a table is out there but we don't need to memorize that. I'll go over that in a minute times standard deviation divided by root square of the sample size. And standard deviation by, divided by root square of the sample size is the same, same as the standard error of the mean. So let's say if someone wants to find out what's the mean range that uh, we can be 95% sure that the actual population actually falls under that range. So 95% confidence interval is equal mean plus and, plus and minus Z score for 95% is 1.96 times standard deviation, which is 20, divided by root square of 100 is 10. So the mean here was 140. So it would be approximately 140 plus and minus uh, 4, which would be approximately 136 to 144. So we are 95% sure that the mean uh, blood sugar for people that are out there will, will fall somewhere in between 136 and 144. So as I mentioned earlier, you do not need to memorize the table for z-score. The only two values that you will need to know is for 95% confidence interval, it is 1.96 and for 99% it is 2.58. You just memorize these two values and you're okay. Now the other type of question that you may encounter is that they may ask you, like uh, they will provide you with a um, confidence interval of the relative risk and tell you which of these risk factors is having a significant effect on development of a, a, a specific condition. And how you can address these questions is to find out if the value 1 falls in that range for confidence interval of the relative risk, either relative risk or odds ratio. So let's see here, for instance, one does actually fall in the range between 0.67 and 1.34. So the effect of uh, risk factor A is not significant. Versus risk factor B, one is actually falls under the 1.08 to 2.46. So Therefore, risk factor B does have a significant effect. And finally, for the last one, one falls above the range that is provided here. So um, risk factor C also does have a significant effect. Another kind of question that you may encounter is that they may give you a confident in interval of the mean and tell you if those treatments are different. So let's say there are different treatments for, um, just let's say for argument's sake, for uh, hypertension and drug A affects the uh, hypertension index by this much, drug B changes by this much, and drug C changes by this much. Now the question is asking you, so confidence interval is on the vertical axis. So the question asks you which of these treatments is significantly different from the other ones. So if you've noticed drug B, the confidence interval actually does intercept the other ones. 
So therefore, drug B is no significantly different from drug C and drug A. However, if you look at drug A versus drug C, they do not overlap. So the effects of drug A is significantly different than drug C. And that concludes our discussion.